at the senior management level. So when women come into the organization, um, they say, we, you know, we, when we see all, all this around us, we feel we can achieve anything. Similarly, the same women who worked in other media organizations feel, okay, you know, when we worked there, it was, we were always thought of, you, you are at best, you can be a secretary or a PA. You can't be in this day in a media organization, which typically has a lot more women. This was the softer feeling that they got in the environment. Mm -hmm. And where is that feeling stemming from? It is stemming from, you know, you know male got, colleagues. Mm -hmm. And got, sorry, my sorry. last yeah. point, and you know, that's where I worry when I see these kind of conferences while they do a lot, and we should use this opportunity. Where are the men? These conferences should be directed more towards men. We should be training our men colleagues that, you know, how, how is it? Because remember, they are as hardwired. That, you know, she will bring me my cup of chai. Yeah. When you sit and in a room and there are men and women sitting, if like there's one woman, everybody looks at her when it's time for tea, when she's supposed to get up and go and yeah. So do you believe there's a bit of an undertone of a bias when it comes to, you know, some companies going the other way and mandating specific senior roles or any job saying that we need to hire a woman for this role? Is there a so bias that goes back to that, that goes back to my tokenism and CSR. Yeah. You know, I'm very much against saying that there should be a reservation for 30% women on board. Women will make it on their own. You just create an environment, they will make it on their own. They don't need to have reservations or seats for them. Uh, not uh -huh. just an individual company, you know, because a woman in a company is not just working with the 10 people within that company. There is a whole ecosystem around her, you know. I mean, you're in a sales role, you're in a marketing role, you're meeting every other company, you know, you're not just dealing with women, you're dealing with, you know, thousands and thousands of men around you, uh, you know. So to Apurva's point, there's a lot more coaching that needs to happen, uh, you know, to men. I mean, I, I started, uh, you know, and I went to meet a stockbroker in India with two other partners, and they both shook his hand, and he shook uh, their hand, and then when it came to me, he said, Namaste, and I was like, why, why do you refuse to shake my hand? And he felt very, very awkward around me. So a lot of the training has to be around the ecosystem. So I was going to add to that earlier. Uh, I think there's definitely a change. We've done, um, I did some panels about three, four years ago that mm. were women. First of all, there were very few women that showed up for it. So mm -hmm. that was, and there was definitely an underlying tone of semi-male bashing. You know what is interesting about this panel is we're not actually, there was never, uh, even conversation or topic around that. It was it was uh, more so what can we do as women to make this better um, for other women? What can we do as women leaders to help other women become more stronger leaders and you know make this a more conducive environment for everybody in terms of growth? So it's an it's an interesting change to see even in the last three years mm -hmm. of uh, you know what we're discussing now. So I think okay, we've so really on gone that leaps note, and bounds. On that note, clearly a transformation of sorts. We've broken through the glass ceiling. Everybody agrees to that and we're taking the next big step. Any questions from the audience? At all? Comes back to the hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about how women are portrayed in fields and how aspects were didn't work well. Um, so basically, it's about the target audience, isn't it? How many of us, when we are working and giving so much time to our workplace, go back and watch a serial on a regular basis? Probably that might be the reason for Astitva not to work. So uh, isn't it that media, uh, when, when Saas Bahu kind of serials are working well, the target audience is the women sitting at home. So, And to actually entertain them, you are portraying women in a particular manner, which pleases them. Probably. Yeah, so I think the fact, uh, it comes back to the same point that there is a target audience and there is entertainment value which serials have to provide. But I think we must give enough credence to the intelligence of the target audience. Mm -hmm. and that is where I always, when we get into media bashing, that okay, the woman is bright enough or the male is bright enough to see that this is a serial and it is entertainment and what is happening in Balika Badu is not necessarily what they have to replicate in, in, in their life. So I think it's, it's lesser about media, media bashing and more about uh, the audience's audience, understanding. Uh, Having said that, I think we should also not try to label target audiences and say the woman sitting at home therefore is a more, you know, a conventional woman versus the woman who's working. I mean, if you've traveled in Bombay trains and for many yeah, years yeah. I have, you I see know. they are working in banks, they are sitting in the train and cutting the subway and subject. going home and making. I so they are as conventional and they are as fond of but they are working. So I think that is also getting somewhere. So we let's 
the bottom of the pyramid, as we call it, are you see several women who are more ardent feminists than many of us would be. Yeah. Why are we leaving it to Sujata <coughs> Bahuti? I mean, we do. Everybody watches Hindi movies. We also do a lot of marketing for the uh, production houses. And uh, you know, I always talked about this. Why don't we make real movies? Why do we do the running around the trees? They're still very popular. popular. Going to Switzerland and showing Shah Rukh Khan. Not not everybody is going to do that. But it's entertainment value again. You know, at the end of the day, you just want to mentally switch off. And that is why a lot of these, you know, we've talked to so many people. They said the Aam Aadmi just wants to mentally switch off after that long hard day of work. And it is so the same about the woman as well. She wants to switch off and see somebody else's life. It's entertainment value. To ask a question, and I'll ask this purely as a viewer, you know, I, I don't think I'm above, you know, I love to cook, I love to watch, you know, I would love to watch TV serials, but, you know, I am sure there is an audience, you know, among all of us who would love to watch an entertaining serial, yes, entertaining, not boring, uh, you know, which has women doing something substantial, where she's not just sitting in a ghungart and crying all day, uh, you know, why don't we have that? Is it because it doesn't work commercially? Can, can there not be a balance? No, I think increasingly you are seeing a balance in it. It's always to do with the life cycle of entertainment as an industry in a country. Mm. I mean, if you see today, aren't there enough movies? And I still quote Dirty Picture as a beautiful signal of I mean, whatever she may use, but she's used her, her, herself to uh, succeed. Right? Ultimately, it's so a women-oriented movie. So it's a woman-oriented yeah. movie, and therefore you'll see many more. You'll see serials. I mean, if you see yeah, whether it is Balika Badhu, whether it is the reality shows. I mean, they are showing women increasingly in a, an equal uh, hmm. position. So it, it is always to do with the life stage of a society and of an, of, of an industry. Another question plus suggestion kinds. Uh, we were talking that men have to be trained and mentored as such. So don't you think that in such conferences we should also have men in audience? Exactly. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so Absolutely. we would definitely like to see that happen. But you more. know, one is in the conferences in more formal settings. I think it's equally how we train our brothers and husbands and sons. Yeah. I think that's very training? true. It starts from home. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we have no men on the panel. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Very so true. please give a balanced perspective Can as I to guess. how they uh, are viewing, uh, you know, the, the entire discussion and women and how we could perhaps help transform uh, yeah, the mindset. Having completely different perspective, which probably Polina, it does start from homes and schools. I don't know. Of course. It you know, it, it does. The I'll values you, start from I'll, home and school. I'll, I'll give you a very, very interesting insight. Um, the kid who uh, who's acted in Raven, uh, the movie, um, he's in uh, my Billabong High Santa Cruz school. And interestingly, when I was walking through, and, and I help uh, kids help me shape policy, including uniforms and things like that. And I was walking through the school, and he came running behind me and said, Miss Lena, Miss Lena, I've got a question for you. And I said, Yeah, what's your question? He said, Well, Miss Lena, you know, you we all talk in school about uh, gender equality and things like that. But why are the rules in the diary different for boys and for girls? So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, girls are allowed to grow their hair as long as they have a hairband. Or So she, he said, I understand that you have it as a logical reason that, you know, that they shouldn't have hair on their face. But why can't you have the same rule, rule for boys? And in fact, I did go back and I changed the policy in the diary. And therefore, you see him in the movie Raven with very, very long hair. Yeah. So, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And he still goes to school every day with the long hair. Yes. So okay, there, I guess we've also reached a point where we don't even want to discuss gender diversity. We want to be considered on par with men. Exactly. So, th I mean, you know, considering that it has a certain biased undertone to it. And I hope the event managers, of course, will invent 